I couldn't leave. We had time to go on a three-day bender, but you didn't have time to come here for a day. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. love to dote on their sons. I know mine did. They're perfect little angels who can do no wrong. Well, Wendy isn't one of those moms. In fact, she says her youngest son, Grant, is a professional <laughs> con artist. <laughs> she says he has a drinking problem and a history of abusing every woman he has ever been with including his current girlfriend, Corinne, who is five months pregnant. Now, Corinne says she loves Grant, but if he doesn't stop boozing and abusing, they are on the verge of losing their children. And it wouldn't be the first time because she has already lost primary custody of one of her children because of her relationship with Grant. Now, Wendy says she'll do whatever it takes to protect her grandchildren and wants her alcoholic son to shape up and shape up right now. Take a look. My son Grant is violent and abusive towards me and Corinne. He calls me crazy bitch. I walk on eggshells a lot because I don't know what kind of mood he's going to be in. When he's drunk, he says things he doesn't mean. Alcohol is Grant's best friend. She's called me because she's scared out of her mind. He's screaming at her. He would push her out onto the deck, lock her out on the deck outside in the winter. He tells her to get out of the house. Get out and she's not taking the baby. It's a big cycle. Do you not understand? Understand that if you drink, our children. Get I do. Them. I do understand that. When Grant's drunk, he's totally different. I don't even recognize the man he is. It's like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Anything can set him off. One time, he caught me in a lie and threw a cup at the wall. Our one-year-old daughter was on the floor playing. I get angry with Grant because he keeps picking alcohol over his family. I moved out four times, and I've come back every time. She leaves, or he throws her out. He starts to butter her up. Grant is a con artist because he has manipulated people his whole life to get what he wants. Grant has had a few DUIs. He was in jail. He's been to one rehab. Grant needs to get his together. I wonder if he has empathy. I've had enough of Grant's toxic behavior. I think that Corinne needs to break things off and move on with her life. I believe my children deserve a lot more, but I'm scared to leave Grant for good. I'm scared to be without him. He's the love of my life.
swear I won't forget this Why do I regret this? In my mind reckless Thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless Anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless Betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open I hate being broken I feel like an ocean Filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion Rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking Reopen The scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go Okay, you say you need, you don't want to leave him because he's the love of your life, but yet you, you have children. I do, yes. And if you have to make a choice, you choose him over your children. That's what it looks like, yes. Well, based on results, that's yes. what it's been. Yes. Okay, so you say he is a professional, to quote you, a professional <laughs> con artist. Yes. And that she needs to get away from him. It's unhealthy for the children. It's definitely unhealthy for a baby. Um, it's unsafe. I just think she needs to get away and be on her own. Well, see, this is kind of unusual, you know, because usually, I mean, y'all aren't married, but you're together. Usually the mother-in-law's dogging on the daughter-in-law and taking up for her son, and this is kind of reverse order. You're calling her, warning her, get away from my son. But she's telling us, I'm scared to stay, but I'm scared to leave because I don't want to be alone. She says, we met in rehab, not good. He lost his driver's license for years from DUI and he was not working. I became his financial support, his driver, his bank. It was awful. The abuse began almost immediately for both of us. And I lost my precious daughter. Tell me, where is the threshold where you say enough's enough and too much is too much? Is there a threshold? Honestly. Somebody came and got your child right. because you were in a toxic relationship and you said that's not enough. What, is there a point that's enough? Right now I'm at that point. For me, I want, however crazy people might think I am, I do love Grant. I do want a life with Grant. <clears throat> But a lot needs to change before that can happen. You've I mean, left him four times. Yes, I have. And you said, if you don't go to Dr. Phil, 
this is an ultimatum. Do yes. it or I'm gone. This yes. is we're, we're done. Yes. But you've said you've left four times. Right. I have. And I've tried to be very supportive of her leaving. And each time I go back. My producer calls, which right. is this is for help, right? right I mean, exactly. he, he knows what this show's about. Yes. He knows that, that you've asked for help. Yep. My producer calls and he says, All right, that's it. I'm out of here. Goes on a three day bender. And I know it sounds crazy, Dr. Phil, I really do, but as when we're good, we are good. When we are bad, we are bad. And I love him dearly, and I love my children dearly. And I know <clears throat> if he were to get the help, he could be a better person. You're willing to sacrifice a child. You say, I'm not saying he's the reason you lost your child. You say he's the reason you lost your child. All my drinking, too. Like, it wasn't all him why but, he no, lost. No, that's what you said. Because of your relationship with him, because of all the alcohol and your toxic yes. relationship with him, they said, we cannot leave this child in this and relationship. They and they took her. And that wasn't enough to wake you up. Well, Grant says that Corinne and his mom both need to just butt out of his life. Because he says no one has the right to tell him what to do. Let's get his point of view here. I am my own worst enemy. I have always enjoyed chaos in my life. I like to mess with people. I like to bring the worst out of people just to make it an even more hectic environment. If you're making me mad, I'm going to provoke that extra little bit of rage out of you just because I'm pissed off. I provoke people into making them explode. It's a non-stop battle with Corinne. Corinne can be very aggressive. Corinne is overbearing and constantly making my life harder. I tell you, I just, I just want to be left alone. I'm verbally abusive to Corinne. I call her a psycho bitch, crazy, nutcase. I lash out. I try to hurt her feelings. When we're fighting, I get a kick out of it. I smacked her once and pushed her out of the way. I'm an alcoholic because I don't have an off switch with alcohol. I drink once or twice a month. I drink about 15 beers. I've tried to hide it from Corinne. You always come home drunk. Every once in a while, I just want to go out and have a couple of drinks. My mom sick of the drama. Corinne and my mom are like best friends. I don't like that relationship because mothers are supposed to have boundaries. And I do not give a rat's ass about my mom's relationship. So why should she care about mine? I don't believe that anybody really has the right to tell me what I do. This is my life. Grant does what Grant wants to do and nobody's going to tell him any different. Well, you're right about that because you're an adult. So you pretty much do what you want to do when you want to do it? For the most part, yeah. You say that you've been violent with her, but nothing too bad. And in fact, she's the one that's the most violent. Yes. With yeah. me provoking her. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had a relationship that worked? Long term, not really. How would you rate this one on a scale of 1 to 10 if 10 was smooth sailing? 10 was smooth sailing? Yeah. This one, 6, 4, 4, <laughs> 4, 4. Yeah, let's How would you rate this on a 1 to 10? 5. 5? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 4 out of 5. Well, like she said, when it's good, it's good. When, when it's, it's bad, bad, it's bad. What do you think he wants? I think he honestly wants us to be happy and not live this chaotic life. Really? Yes. We're going to take a break and come back and test that sentence against reality. When Grant and Wendy both say Grant is an alcoholic, Grant says some people go to the gym. Well, he drinks beer and they just need to deal with it. We'll talk about that and this sentence after the break. All I've ever wanted is a sober and healthy life with Grant. Grant has tried many different programs. He's gone to rehab, he's done AA, he's never completed them. I'm not as bad as most alcoholics. Alcohol is an escape for me. And later, you say, well, but I love him. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. That's the way I feel. You're offering that as an explanation for why you are giving up your children. Yes. Tomorrow, 
won an all-new Dr. Phil. A grandmother murdered. Your son stabbed your mother. He killed your mom. A daughter estranged. Stop. stop. You don't have to stop. You can say whatever you want. The way that she's talking to me, I'm not receptive to it at all. That's a little self-righteous for somebody that has done the things that you have done as a parent. Listen, I don't have to be here admitting that I abused my child, okay? That's tomorrow. Karina is abusive towards me and has been physical in the past. She has attacked me out of pure rage. I start the physical abuse between Grant and I. I'm the one more lashing out. One time, Grant came home. I have a very strict rule that if he drinks, don't come home. That's the bottom line. He came home, and I was nagging him, and I took his phone away. I lost it, and I punched him a couple times in the arm, and I hit him in the face as well. I feel this rage building up inside me. It feels like I'm going to explode. I sometimes enjoy pushing Corinne's buttons. The more you love somebody, the more passion for that person is there. And sometimes passion can get distorted with anger. Corinne wrote into the show saying she was scared of her boyfriend Grant. She said things started going downhill when the two had the bright idea to celebrate their sobriety by going on a drinking binge. <laughs> Well, they met in rehab. Corinne has since stopped drinking, but Grant says that he still uses alcohol. I definitely am an alcoholic. I'm not as bad as most alcoholics. Alcohol is an escape for me. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel like every time I can just go out and have one or two drinks and it just never turns out that way. Definitely cannot handle one or two drinks. Grant resents me for being sober or being able to stay sober. I was 15 when I started drinking and then it turned to the point where I was blacking out. I've been sober for two years. My mother was an alcoholic. Everybody in my family is an alcoholic. When I was raising my kids, I would just sit at home and drink by myself until I passed out. My kids, they never saw me drinking. They never saw me drunk. I've been sober for 26 years. I could never have stopped drinking without Alcoholics Anonymous. AA changed my life. Grant does not want to hear any more about Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't want my girlfriend around dirty old alcoholic drug addicts. I personally believe that Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't work for me. All I've ever wanted is a sober and healthy life with Grant. Grant has tried many different programs. He's gone to rehab. He's done AA. He's never completed them. I don't believe in a lot of the once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. It's like a blind faith. Like, oh my God, I can never pick up a drink again. Says who? Before we went to break, I, I ask you what you think he wants. And you said, and I quote, I think he wants us happy and to not have this chaotic life. Well, I think words are really powerful. I think words are really important. Words we say to ourselves, and words we say to each other. And you, you didn't want to come here, right? Um, I have a very important job that I couldn't leave at, the, at that moment. We had time to go on a three-day bender. I, I did say, How'd you, know you have what? time for that, but you didn't have time to come here for a day? Uh, I, that is a good point. Do you often think you're the smartest guy in the room? <laughs> Most attractive, but not the smartest, no. In that case, you, you got it. You what? You have that. <laughs> I'm the most attractive or I'm the smartest? You're both. <laughs> most attractive and smartest gentleman. Yeah. Well, I said I think words are important, and I asked you what you thought, and you said I, I think he wants us happy and he doesn't yes. want the chaos. Yeah. Well, when you did your interview for us, mm -hmm. you, you did a tape piece, I actually transcribed We played it earlier, but I transcribed it because I don't think you listen a lot to what he says. Probably not, no. Let's look at what he says. This, his first line is encouraging to me because it, it indicates some insight. He says, I'm my own worst enemy because I think you realize you get in your own way. Oh yeah, all the time. I have always enjoyed chaos in my life. I have enjoyed chaos in my life. I like to mess with people. I like 
to bring the worst out in people. Make, to make it even more hectic. I like that. If you're making me mad, I'm going to provoke that extra little bit of rage out of you just because I'm pissed. I provoke people into making them explode. I think words are powerful. What do you think of those words? You said, awful. I, you I, said I, want he, I think he wants us to be happy. I think he doesn't like this chaos. He's telling us right here, I, I love this <laughs> He's telling you, I thrive on chaos. I call her a psycho bitch crazy nutcase. I lash out. I try to hurt her feelings. I try to hurt her feelings. When we're fighting, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Now he's just, he's just talking. He's just letting his alligator mouth overload his hummingbird ass is what he's doing right here. <laughs> Life was good, we both had great jobs, a home, everything was going good. What could possibly go wrong? We drank. And that was the worst decision that we've ever made in our entire relationship. That's when I saw Corinne for the first time. Corinne the alcoholic. And later, you are toxic. If you can't change that, then end this relationship like that. relationship took a turn when we both relapsed. Our life was good. We both had great jobs, a home. Everything was going good. What could possibly go wrong? We drank. I was nine months sober. Corinne was six months sober. Then the little demon in the back of your head started talking. One day we decided, let's go get a case of beer and go out to the cabin. And that was the worst decision that we've ever made in our entire relationship. We were gone for five days on a binge. We were play fighting downstairs. We were, had boxing gloves on. We were both drinking. That's when I saw Corinne for the first time. Corinne the alcoholic. He said, this is how you choke someone out. Something snapped in me and I punched him in the face and he fell into the bathtub. That was the end of me. When we drink, we're a very toxic couple. I don't believe anybody. I don't believe anybody has the right to tell me what to do. This is my life. My life. Translation. Selfish. Screw you. Yeah. This is my life. Okay? Grant does what Grant wants. Nobody is going to tell him any different. He's now talking about himself in the third person. <laughs> okay. So this is, we just asked him to sit down and chat us up for a few minutes. And this is what he said. I did say that. And it's true. But I don't go looking for fights. If someone has, I feel in my opinion, wronged me or is pissing me off, then I will use that tool to aggravate them or to, let's say, get them back for making me upset. But that's everybody. <laughs> for the most part, that is a lot of people. So how's that working for you? It's not working out good. And over the years, especially with the, the kids coming and integrating into a role of fatherhood, I've tried to distance myself from that, but it's, it's hard to reprogram 30 years of hardwired behavior. You say you don't think you're the smartest person in the room. You, you say people at AA are the most manipulative, sick bastards you could meet. That is one of the comments I have made, yes. Yeah. You said they're wolves in sheep's AA. clothing, dirty old men, drug addicts, just, you know. Yeah. Those are, like yeah. And I'm one. Yeah. And Corinne. I'm one too, because that has saved my life. If you're so smart, how come you've run your life off in a ditch so bad? I'm obviously you not would as... argue with a statue. You can't get along with anybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously not as smart as I think I am. That's why I'm here. 
That's the reason no, I ended up. No, you're here because you got threatened. No, because I, I'm here because I want the help for future Grant, for my children, for Corinne, for my mom, for their, for their sanity, for my sanity. That's why I'm here. I'm here today sitting in his chair because I believe that there is an opportunity to eradicate the way that I think about certain things. Well, we're going to put that to the test in a minute because i got some questions for all of you. Corinne says she's tried to leave Grant numerous times, but his, quote, lame half-ass apologies keep her coming back for more. Wendy says Corinne is a drama queen who thrives on Grant's chaos. Boy, this is a match made in heaven, right? <laughs> we'll talk about all of that after the break. Well, that's part of the grant program. These two are both just victims. Could we outline the grant program? <laughs> well, it's not funny. I need my space to calm down. When I ask Corinne to leave me alone, the last thing she wants to do is leave me alone. Grant is in my face. Women want to talk about everything right now, and if you don't, there's always trouble. Grant has said more than once that if it wasn't for all the crazy bitches in his life, that he wouldn't be like this, and if he could just not have a crazy bitch in his life, he would be fine. Well, Corinne and Wendy have teamed up to get Grant here today. Wendy says she's sick and tired of being stuck in the middle of their relationship. She says she knows Grant has a problem, but thinks Corinne doesn't help matters by stirring the pot. Corinne is a drama queen. Corinne texts and emails me daily about Grant's behavior. Oh, she'll sometimes text me 15 texts a day, 20 texts a day. Sometimes I have to tell her to stop texting me. Corinne is high strung. Corinne is stressed all the time. And Corinne likes to create problems that don't exist. She needs to have skills to manage her own life. Her maturity level is stunted. Yep. You know, Fair I've, enough. I've been focusing on Grand Fairmount here. What I don't get, and I think what women all over the country right now are screaming at their television sets about, is what is your excuse? You've got a guy here that's telling you, I get a kick out of jacking with you. I get a kick out of making you just unwind and blow up and I, I, I really enjoy that and you lose custody of a child you're in jeopardy of losing custody of another one and the one that's on the way and you say well but I love him when it's good it's good when it's bad it's bad what the hell does that mean we're good like we're we okay really I get it I heard it what does know, that mean what what do you mean what does that mean you're asking me well, you're, you're offering that as an explanation for why you are giving up your children yes I know that I and I've admitted to that and that's not right uh, you know, I should have left a long time ago and stayed gone, but I keep coming back. Are you saying the I'm good not... times are so good that they overbalance Over. the bad times and so you overlook the bad times? That's a good way of putting it, I guess, yeah. I don't... That's a good way of describing really... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, what everybody at home just heard was... Bee -bee -bee. <laughs> What she meant is that didn't make sense at all. <laughs> and you do contradict yourself. You contradicted yourself between the things you say in text messages to her and what you interview to us. When you interview us, you say, I'm not scared of Grant. And in email, you say, I'm scared to stay for my children's sake, for my own safety. The kids never see abuse. They've never been around to see it. Then in an email you say, he tells me I'm crazy, I'm a stupid bitch. He does this by text or worse yet, in front of the kids. He doesn't stop me from going to AA meetings, but he doesn't think it works. Then in an email, Grant has made every attempt to sabotage my sobriety. What, what is it? You say one thing one minute and one thing the next. I'm all over the place. I'm stressed, I'm filled with... <clears throat> drama, I like drama, I guess. I'm chaotic. 
and that's another reason I'm here, is I need to fix that. I need to do that for my children. I need to do that for me. This would be fine if you two were juniors in high school? That's exactly it. But you're not. No. We're you're not. adults. And there were one, two, soon to be three children now that have hooked their wagons to your stars. Mm -hmm. And they don't get the chaos. They don't understand why you think that Grant gets to do what Grant gets to do because somehow Grant's entitled. Being a little bit more selfless, I know Grant does what the Grant, Grant program does, but I've tried to integrate that into my day-to-day -day life, for instance, my job. You know, I was very adamant about what I wanted to do in my life and I got it, so that's part of the Grant program. These two are both just victims. Could we, could we outline, I'm, not, I'm not a victim. Could we outline the Grant program? <laughs> It's not funny. It's no, actually quite... It's not. I'm just curious what the grant program is. Well, if I Because I have a Dr. Phil program here yeah. I was kind of interested in going over. It's... Wendy says her son Grant was so out of control as a kid she had to put him in foster care when he was nine years old. Really? And then we are going to talk about the Dr. Phil program. We'll be right back. on an all-new Dr. Phil. Mom admits she beat her daughter. Stop. The way that she's talking to me, I'm not receptive to it. That's a little self-righteous. I don't have to be here admitting that I abused my child. That's tomorrow. My mom sent me to foster care because I was out of control. I took him to a specialist when he was eight. I have taken him to many doctors. When he got into elementary school, it started out that he was fighting with kids. He'd bring a pocket knife to school. He'd threaten kids at school. I drove to Child and Family Services, and he was in the back of the van trying to smash my windows out with a golf club. I watched Dr. Phil when he first started. I wanted to contact him back then when I couldn't get any help for Grant. Now, as he's gotten older, I just see the same problems just escalating and getting worse. I actually made a list of everything that, not everything, but of a pretty good sampling of what I think the problems are here. First off, toxic home. I think you came from a toxic home. I think you have created a toxic home. There's aggression and arguing and alcohol and physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse. You just live in a toxic environment. And you're bringing up kids in a toxic environment. Okay, so who's living in this toxic environment? Well, you are immature. You've got two people here that never grew up. A mother doesn't let their child go because they want to continue to live with a drunk. Because they want to continue to be a drunk. If Child Protective Services comes and says, whoa, lady, what you do is say, you, I'm kicking your ass to the curb. You people tell me what I need to do to keep this child with me. I need to do parenting classes. I need to grow up. I need to straight. Whatever I need to do, this child is mine, and nobody takes this child. That's maturity. You didn't do that, and you didn't do it. You should have done whatever had to do to make sure that woman didn't lose her child. And why didn't you do it? Because you both of you are hedonistic. I mean, you seek pleasure and avoid pain. You go for immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. Because mature people are willing to sacrifice now to get a whole lot later. Yes. But you can't do that when you have poor impulse control. And both of you have extremely poor impulse control. You're both self-indulgent. 
Everything's now, everything's drama, everything's all about them. Mm -hmm. And when you feel anger and frustration, you just vent it. Yep. yep. And this is cyclical. Oh. You know, this, is, this is cyclical. You get verbal and emotional, you've already told us you enjoy it, you get a kick out of it. You like to poke her and just drive her nuts. In the moment, And yeah. then so you attack him and you start slapping him and slugging him and kicking him and scratching him. And then he goes, yeah, got her, man, look at her. She's going nuts, I love this. And then you attack him more and then he, you guys are just, you look, you, you look like a Roadrunner cartoon, <laughs> except it ain't funny. You gotta stop being what's written down next. <laughs> And that is cynical. I think what's been in the grant program has been pain. Pain? Very cynical. Lots of pain, though. And the interest you got to put ahead of your own. My children. Is your children. And to do that, you have to write an entirely new life script. And I'm going to tell you both how to do that after the break. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you want to watch a live studio taping of the Dr. Phil show, go to drphil.com for free tickets or call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. You have to decide, each of you, you have to decide first off, we either fix this or we get away from each other. I mean, that's, that becomes, that's the foundational decision. Right. If this continues, if I thought this was going to continue, I would tell you to get away from each other before the sun sets today. Just that, that has to be the predicate upon which right. everything else is based. And I've said that okay. over and over to them. That, that's, that's number one. Then number two, you have to decide if you want to try and fix this, then you have to be willing to submit yourself to whatever it takes to get this chaos stopped and get this fixed. And I will get you the professional help to do that. I will not, I, I'm not going to force, require, chase after either one of you to do anything. I will make available to you whatever you feel like gives you the best chance to get the result that you want. I think you have a serious problem with alcohol. If I were you and I had a chance to get into rehab and get myself cleaned up, I would do that. There's a place that I think is really well suited to you. Uh, it's called Origins Behavioral Health Care. And it deals with everything that has to do with your attitudes, beliefs, all your emotional adjustment, all the things that have to do with why you would self-medicate uh, with alcohol and teaches you what you need to do. I think you guys have to decide that, look, this is our chance. This is our chance to give our children what they deserve. And you have to be willing to immerse yourself in that or get the hell away from each other. It's just that simple. I agree. And if I make this help available to you, will, will you avail yourself of it? Of course I will, yes. Top side and bottom, all yep. the way across. Uh, yes. And through and through. Will you? Yep. Every step of the yep. way. Every step. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. The mother discovers why her young child was disruptive and spinning in circles. What she learned has been life-changing for her and her little girl. We'll be right back. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today.
My next guest, Hillary, has three beautiful young daughters. Everything seemed picture perfect until three months ago when she received news that her seven-year-old was diagnosed with ADHD. Now, Hillary says she is at a loss on how to help her little girl and wonders if she could have prevented her daughter's disorder. Take a look. middle child. She's out of control. No, I don't want to know. My daughter suffers from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. She is constantly angry over the smallest things. She just screams and yells. No. Being around my daughter is like walking on eggshells. Yeah. Oh my God. Having a child that suffers from ADHD is a struggle every day. Sometimes she gets very wound up that she will sit on the ground and spin in circles. I feel hopeless when I cannot control the situation with her. I feel like I neglect my other children because of my daughter's disorder. I often wonder why it had to be my child. Well, Hillary is here with us and also joining us is our very good friend. Welcome back this season, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So, welcome. Um, uh, Hillary, prior to her diagnosis, were there signs that something was going on with your seven-year-old? Yes, she was very fidgety, couldn't sit still, um, couldn't focus, would fight with her sisters a lot. Yeah, and, and siblings do that, of course. And you mentioned that you really feel guilty about your child's ADHD. And are kind of wondering if this is your fault. I feel like it's my fault. Like, I'm guilty. There's something I could have done different. Like, people think I'm a bad parent. From a medical standpoint, does parenting have anything to do with a child developing ADHD? I really want to say first to Hillary that attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or what we call ADHD, is not the result of poor parenting is not the result of poor parenting. It's also not the result of common misconceptions like, oh, I let them watch too much television or they play too many video games or eat too much sugar. So this is a real medical condition and it's a common one. About 11% of children school aged in the United States, so that's ages four to 17, are diagnosed with ADHD. That makes it one of the most common brain disorders that affects young children. So what has been the reaction of family members, and even the general public, to your daughter's behavior? Um, they tell me she has middle child syndrome and she just needs more spankings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good plan. Um, so, look, here's the big question. I mean, how can a parent tell when a child is just misbehaving versus it being something more serious, something neurological. The symptoms of ADHD are things like some you mentioned, fidgeting, talking excessively, um, really being disorganized or disruptive, impatient, interrupting, distracted, um, also being forgetful or in, unable to pay attention to detail. So I'm, I'm looking and people are like, oh yeah, that's all kids, right? Well, yes, true. All children may exhibit these behaviors at one point or another, but children with ADHD are a little bit different. They have these behaviors over time, usually six months or more before the age of 12. And these behaviors are excessive for their age. How does this show up in the educational process? Because I know her daughter has had an impact and they want her to repeat a grade because of her inattentiveness. It's not unusual for kids with ADHD to have trouble in school. And it can show up as learning disabilities, disruptive behaviors, mood disorders like anxiety and depression. All of these affect what's happening in school. So what are some things that parents can do to help manage their kids' ADHD symptoms? First step, visit to the pediatrician. Your pediatrician may be involved in checking for things like seizure disorders, uh, sleep disorders, things like thyroid problems. These can actually resemble um, ADHD, so you want to make sure that you know what's going on there. And then you want to make sure that they um, are properly diagnosed with ADHD. Then a long-term treatment plan it gets put in place. There may be a whole range of things that we can do to manage ADHD. It may be behavioral therapy, counseling may be recommended, educational interventions may be needed, and medication might be recommended as well. 
So ask all the questions that you can possibly ask. Get comfortable with the recommendations. Put the treatment plan in place. Then you want to really follow it carefully and make sure that if there are any changes, changes in behavior, symptoms, new symptoms, you're in constant touch with, the, with your health care team. And Hillary, I'm saying this to you and all the parents out there that are in this situation. The first thing you got to do is educate yourself. So, you know, there's another, so many misconceptions around this disorder. And one of them is that children somehow outgrew ADHD when they uh, became adults. No, not so much. And so uh, what we now know is about 40 to 60 percent of children with ADHD grow into adults with symptoms of ADHD. So that long-term treatment plan that you and I keep mentioning to you is really important because you want one that's flexible and can be a adjusted to the new environment. It's critical that you get the right diagnosis. For tips on the everyday management of ADHD, as well as links to parenting resources, you can visit GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. You can also sign up for our monthly newsletter for health information sent directly to your inbox. Thanks for being here again. Thank you. And for thanks for sharing this story. I really appreciate it. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall and Origins Behavioral Health Care. For more information on today's